evening, guys. Welcome to Live Apollos. Happy to have you here as always. Yes, it has been far too long since I've sat down in the Beard Nation studio to deliver to you the best of the automotive and supercar community. But today we're going to remedy that by bringing you one of the crazier stories that we've seen concerning one of the biggest automotive YouTube personalities out there, period. Additionally, we will, of course, be bringing you the latest and greatest from across the automotive YouTube landscape. Uh, ladies, and gentlemen, Beard Nation, sorry I took so long, but here's your news of the day. All right, first up tonight, guys, we're going to jump right into the thick of it. Our main headline story having to do with Doug DeMuro. Now, we've talked about Doug DeMuro uh, thousands of times over the years, uh, but generally it has to do with a particular video. He's put out an interesting car that he's reviewed. Very rarely does he ever pop up in our news cycle as a headline story, and there's a pretty good reason for that. From what I can tell, uh, from a number of stories over the years, Doug DeMuro really doesn't like to be in the news unless it's something really positive having to do with him, like selling a portion of cars and bids. He did a huge tour on many podcasts talking about that, his crazy multi-million dollar payday, buying his Porsche Carrera GT. But Doug DeMuro is now back in the news uh, for essentially being chased by a number of different cars, yes, more than one, uh, through very heavy traffic. Now, the video that we have for you guys uh, is definitely sped up to a degree, so keep that in mind when you're watching it. It's obviously not going exactly this fast, um, but not only is the video kind of crazy to watch, and you guys will see here in a moment, uh, but additionally, the comments of Doug DeMuro defending his actions uh, and talking about the two other cars involved in this uh, got to be an entirely separate issue. Uh, many, many messages and comments back and forth with tons of people weighing in. We're going to cover it all here in a moment, but watch this clip first. So you saw the video right there, guys. Uh, Doug DeMuro weaving through multiple lanes of traffic, going over the double whites uh, with a BMW and a Tesla, seemingly chasing him through. Uh, and almost, you know, it's hard to tell because it sped up. It looked like there were some very close instances where somebody could have crashed based on sort of the braking that we saw in the video. But Doug DeMuro was quick to defend his actions and sort of the entire event with some very long comments. His pinned comment uh, from the creator that I believe took the video, I think, said, this video is such a great example of what happens every single time I drive my sports car. I get followed insanely closely by people, that BMW, who won't leave me alone and want to race or hang with a Carrera GT or Ford GT. I try to get away from them, but they refuse to back off. It's so dangerous and annoying. The recording stopped, but eventually I had to motion to the BMW to get away from me. Please don't do this when you see exotic cars on the the road, get a couple of photos, take a long look, but don't follow nine inches from the bumper for every single lane change and turn. Um, him responding to a number of other comments saying, you'll notice that in this video, twice I just stopped and forced the pursuing cars to pass me so they wouldn't keep tailing me. First the BMW, uh, then the Tesla. So irritating. Now, interestingly enough, a number of people started, I guess, like making the argument against what Doug DeMuro was doing in this video. One particular person and saying, I mean, you brought this upon yourself. You literally told the story how you immediately dropped everything you were doing and raced to see a CGT in your youth and stood there for half an hour watching the car. And now you're blaming other people that are doing pretty much the exact same thing you did. And it doesn't excuse you from swerving in and out of the carpool lane like you own the whole highway. Doug DeMuro responding back, saying these people aren't doing the same thing at all. I looked at a car that was stationary, parked, sitting there. I never chased anyone through traffic and I never would. Embarrassing and dangerous behavior that is totally uncalled for. Grab a picture, have a look, then back off period. Another person saying, LOL, there is no excuse for driving like this. If you do 60, they will eventually pass. Uh, Doug DeMuro is just creating a more dangerous situation, swerving through traffic. And I believe Doug DeMuro 
respond to this individual as well, saying, and you can see twice in the video, I had to do exactly that. First with the BMW and then the Tesla. They wouldn't back off, even though it's clearly what I wanted. So after about 10 seconds in both cases, I had to slam on my brakes and just force them to pass. Even then, after this video, they just continued to stay directly next to me, sitting in my blind spot, presumably filming while driving. Take the picture, take a look, then back off, period. This back and forth exchange continued with the individual saying, you have no defense here, you are in no danger from people recording you, don't have to brake check anyone for safety, you have no expectation of privacy in a supercar on a public highway, just do the speed limit, with Doug DeMuro saying, uh, how can you say that my driving here is unsafe? But then also say that I'm in no danger uh, from people driving the exact same way, except the difference is they're 16 years old and filming while they're doing it, obviously a bad opinion, but then you're just trolling. I also now realize this comment section is largely populated by car spotters who do the same thing. I enjoyed car spotting when I was younger. I never chased people around two feet from their car and I left as soon as it was clear they didn't want me there. But now the pull of TikTok clout is too high. Other people weighed in with a number of likes on these comments as well saying, oh Doug, why do you have to be one of these people in traffic? I had a greater respect for you. So I think there's a couple of observations here and I'd be curious what you guys think here as well. I would love to get you to way in here on who's in the right, who's in the wrong. But from what I can see, there's a couple things that I think. Um, one, I really don't think anyone should ever be chasing their favorite YouTube personality, or even if it's just a cool car, like if this wasn't Doug DeMiro and just some random person with a Porsche a Carrera GT, um, chasing somebody through traffic when they're obviously trying to get away from you, uh, that that's a big no-go. That should really never be done. You're putting tons of other motorists uh, at risk here. That being said, uh, you know, I, I do understand Understand this to a little bit. You know, I've had a McLaren, I've had a Ferrari, we got the R8 now. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that drive erratically next to crazy cars. There's always people trying to race me. There's people very close to me trying to get a picture. Generally, I would have to say that, you know, driving kind of like a grandma until they sort of move on has been the best bet for my safety and the safety for other motorists around me. I definitely get how in the moment uh, you could want to like, you know, weave in and out to try to get rid of them. But if someone's already following you that close, uh, I can't imagine sort of swerving in and out through traffic would be a good move to uh, make it a safer scenario, if that makes sense. It's not a fair thing to have to compensate for some other jack wagon, you know, following you closely or chasing you through traffic. Uh, but unless there's like an imminent danger uh, of you being hit by them and you absolutely have to get out of the way, generally I think driving very super cautious, very even slow to a particular degree tends to be the better choice. But I wasn't in that situation with Doug Tamiro. It could have been very different. Obviously, it was sped up a bit. He might have thought he had lots of time to do that, but I'm curious where you guys think uh, the situation lands for you. Was Doug Tamiro in the wrong at all and how he reacted to a really unfortunate situation? Nobody should be chasing him through anything. And uh, what do you guys think about the whole situation? Put it in the comments below, but definitely one of the crazier stories we've seen, uh, especially considering how Doug Tamiro just really doesn't like to be in the news for any reason other than super positive stuff. Let me know what you think in the comments below. On to our next story. Next up, guys, if you need a dose of Strad, man, he's got a pretty fun Lamborghini-centric video for you. The latest video is called Lambo Only Rally Shuts Down Utah. Now, I think it underwent some title changes, so it might have been different than it initially was, um, but kind of a good old classic Stradman vlog if you're looking for something uh, akin to yesteryear. Make sure to go check it out, guys. Uh, Stradman has continually stayed very strong in views over the years, and it's nice to see him actually out there doing some action instead of just kind of like chilling around the garage. I think it's a great look to get more action. Rally, awesome stuff. Make sure to go check it out. Make sure to go check it out, guys. Let me know what you think, too. Then we got the guru of car dealerships, Lucky Lopez, guys. Brand new video from him, the future of car dealerships. Now, when I say brand new, it's actually from like six days ago, but in terms of uh, getting introduced to Lucky's channel, if you've not seen it before, it is a fantastic video to start with. Um, I have long been a fan of Lucky Lopez's channel. He has blown up over the past couple of years, and for good reason. He really fills a niche in the automotive world and YouTube world in particular that really wasn't being met before. 
before, and he does it extraordinarily well. Go check it out. You'll be happy you did. Tavares back in the saddle again, delivering us the, uh, well, incredible flooded P1 content that we've all wanted for, well, many, many years, and I guess not even known it, if that makes sense. His brand new video, Rebuilding a Flooded $2 million McLaren P1 Part 4. All of these videos are doing, uh, in, in many cases, multiple million views, and for good reason. There has never been a rebuild like this, except for the flooded Bugatti from years ago. Uh, if you guys want to see the best, uh, the very best of the automotive rebuild YouTube world, Tavares has you covered. Go check it out. It's, uh, I want to say, a once-in-a-lifetime thing, for the most part. Let's go see it. And folks, that's all I've got for you guys today. Thanks so much for watching. Apologies that I've been gone over the past, like, week and a half or so. I was actually uh, in pretty heavy training for a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu competition. Actually, uh, more than one of those. I'm getting ready to do hopefully American Nationals here uh, in the next month or so, and that requires me to be in the gym uh, pretty much like five days a week, uh, and I had to cut a bunch of weight to reach the desired weight class that I wanted to be in. Um, so apologies. Uh, it took some time to sort of uh, do personal development, get on the absolute top of my grappling game, and uh, yeah, that's kind of why I was gone. Just couldn't focus us on YouTube and that at the same time, but uh, I've got some time in between, so hopefully this will be a very uh, normal month in terms of video uploads. Anyway, have a great rest of your day. Make sure to stay safe, sane, and healthy. We'll see you later. Bye.